Okay. Anyway, uh, just took a break. Had something to eat. Man, it's taking, I got a lot of stuff I got to get out of the way, man. You probably hear that audio book. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, you guys are getting a whole bunch of bonus material here. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Well, let's see. Anyway, let's continue on. We're on page 11 out of 69 pages. Yeah, yeah, make a couple less. A lot of pages of commercials in the back here. Sheesh, I put about six pages of ads myself. But anyway, uh, it <clears throat> looks like the content actually goes to page 62. Then there's a bibliography. So 62 pages. We're on page 11 here. Okay, the nature of each person is a collection of various characters and identities. Even the best or most pronounced abilities do not represent anyone as a description. And that's so true of the five soul theory. Somebody is a soldier, that doesn't mean they're a warrior. That means they're a worker acting in a warrior capacity. Now, some of them are warriors. You can pick those guys out. Those are the lifers and the people who seem to thrive. And you hear the stories about them. And, and I've met some of them. They, you know, they're, you know, they they find their place there. They accept their place, you know, in the battlefield. Uh, the danger, the fact that they notice that other people can't handle it, and they can, they start to realize, hey, I'm different, <laughs> and so they just kind of accept it. But yes, there are warriors, but they're a small percentage. I'm not sure how they got in there or where they came from. Like I said, I don't know the designs and origins of these souls, as I'm calling them. Um, but anyway. Okay, so like I said, um, uh, just because you're a Marine doesn't mean you're a warrior. It means you're a soldier, which is a worker acting as a warrior, say, in a warrior. So, okay, describe your own nature as you know it. Oh, man, I've been talking about mine. How does your nature guide you? Uh, well, real quickly, I'm, I was going to try to finish this page real fast, but... That, that's been one of the things I've had to figure out. It's been one of the conflicts, because like I said, my family's been always saying, go this way, go this way. I've always wanted to go this way, this way. And so I, I've had this push up and I felt guilty. And then sometimes when there was nothing going on and I wasn't in a band, I didn't have any money, and then they would say, go get a job. And then, you know, it's like, well, how can I defend my position? You know, how can I convince them that me staying home doing nothing or writing music and playing and recording and writing poetry, how can I convince them that that's more important than going and getting a job. I can't, I couldn't, and I still can't, <laughs> I still can't. Now if I made a million bucks and I was Stephen King, they'd be going, oh, do it, do it, Richard. And, yeah, and that's a shame. If they actually would have supported me and helped me or promoted me or made my life better, you know, given me more time to promote myself as a writer, they'd probably be proud of me as I make millions of dollars. But um, anyway. How do you know when you're in conflict with your nature? Like I said, is when I'm just doing things that, and I can't do music, I can't write, and I've got these ideas, and I can't do it, and I can't make a phone call. Like I'm, I'm a manager, I can't, I, they say, oh, no, you can't do it, you know, you have to wait till your lunch break. And back in those days, we didn't have cell phones. So that means you'd have to go to a pay phone, which means I couldn't do that, which means that when I went to a union carpentry job, I was gone all day, and I'd leave early in the morning. So maybe I could catch them at night, but they're gone by the time I get home, and. You know, so I, you can't have two lives. You're either a carpenter or a musician. I couldn't be both, but I tried. Sometimes I was one. Okay, so um, how did your nature develop unconsciously? Well, like I said, I've always been driven to be music, you know, play music all my life, my whole life. I've just done it. And even when I was 13 and I told my parents to trade in my, actually, it might have been 12, but th say 13. Uh, yeah, it was 12. But when I was 13, I had told my parents to trade in my trombone and get my guitar. So they took my trombone, put it in a music shop, and got some money, said, where's my guitar? We're not gonna buy you a guitar. Like, remember, this is 1966. <laughs> so anyway, in 1967, I got a guitar. I went and got a paper route, and I saved up enough money for a down payment, you know, uh, 50 bucks on a $150 Fender Mustang, red Mustang, and uh, then I, made payments on it and uh, paid it off. Ironically, I found out that by the time I was done giving my parents the money that I owed for that thing, my dad kept paying it off for another five, six months because he was paying it off in smaller pieces than I was. So I paid it off faster than my dad could pay it off. Uh, but anyway, that just I was just trying to show you what I was so determined to get my guitar. And then in a, when I was um, exiled to Newfoundland and I was up there uh, before they finally sent me my guitar, I, uh, my uncle had a uh, South American guitar, 
And so I play that, and I, every day I play it for that. I used to tell a story, maybe you haven't heard this one. Um, I, after I was done feeding, I had 600 wildfowl. I was on the Oxen Pond Game Reserve. And if you're newfies out there, you're going, really, you? You're, maybe you even heard, maybe I'm a legend. I doubt it. But I lived there for a year, less than a year, well, maybe half a year. Anyway, <clears throat> before they destroyed it, they cut it and they killed all the animals. Terrible story, and I was there. And then I had to, then I took up with a, uh, a television producer, and she adopted me. So my, I got an interesting story there in Newfoundland. But anyway, um, boy, how did I get onto that, su that subject? Oh, oh, when I was playing for the geese, anyway. So anyway, I'd do all my work and do the geese, and then when I'd sit out in the balcony and I'd play that guitar, and all the geese would come. It was 60 acres. You know, so, but the geese would come from all over the place and come up there, mostly because I was feeding. I was going to walk 60 acres. I'd go down, you know, this far and that far and put out the food and stuff like that. And I didn't want them all coming up there anyway. It's just more hassle to keep them spread out. It was easier. So anyway, I'd feed them out there twice a day. One morning, I'd go out and feed them. And evenings, I'd feed them. And then I had ospreys and, and, um, uh, and snowy owls down below in the basement that I had to go feed every day and take care of. And so anyway. Um, in the evenings, I'd play the guitar, and all the birds would come down and collect, and they would just sit there and be totally quiet. And then I'd stop, and they'd all raise up their hands. I'd just sit there and go, "Wow!" First, thing, I was like, hey, "They're gonna attack me." It sounds like it sounds like they're you know maybe they don't like my music. <laughs> but no. And then as soon as I stopped playing, I'd be quiet. And I'd play. And I'd sing, and it was the it was the I just remember it the rest of my life. Anyway, I did that for a few months, at least. And, yeah, playing for the geese. My, 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 one of my first audiences. As a soloist, they were my first audience. <laughs> That's me, playing for the birds. Yeah, they were good. I'm talking about Canadian geese, uh, ringneck geese, all, all kinds of really, you know, big stuff, 600. And wood, uh, uh, oh, the, the uh, God, I can't remember all their names now. With ducks and all kinds of stuff, but anyway, and it was my job to clip their wings so they couldn't leave. So that's why I knew I always had like 600 of them because every few months you have to cut off some of their primaries underneath, so they kind of fly crooked. They could still get up and it could you know do something, but they can't go airborne because they kind of go in circles. There. <laughs> so anyway, that's how we kept them. Where am I supposed to go? How many? Seven minutes. Let's see if I can wrap this up real fast. I'm not sure. I'm trying to make little teeny sections. I don't. Like I said, I, I don't even know where I'm, oh, I know where I'm going, but uh, I'm kind of like finding the Tao. You know, this is like an exploratory Tao. Usually when I talk about your Tao and your path, that's a regular journey, and you're making that on a regular basis. It's the same type of path. But right now, I'm, I'm forging off into new territories. If you want to remember that soup analogy, I'm, uh, I'm not as sure. I think there's a big hunk of beef coming. Okay, let's see, here we go. Where are we? Um, who or what influenced your nature to be what it is? Well, now I found out I'm born with some of it. I used to give certain credit to certain people and things and influences. But what we do is we can decide who we're going to be. So that's why, like I said, uh, somebody who's a worker can imagine themselves as a warrior and maybe go out and be a soldier and do a good job. That's what it would be. It would be a job. And they would do a good job. <laughs> and that's good. That's a, that's a soldier. Okay, uh, how can you, what can you do to improve or develop your nature? Well, for me, it's not work. I shouldn't take on any jobs. <laughs> Number one, don't work for anybody else. You know? uh, I mean, I'm really kind of struggling right here. I got, hope I make some money soon because I really don't want, well, I can't. I did, actually, I've gotten to a point where that hireable, I'm 66 years old, who wants a philosopher, poet, musician, manager who's, Companies aren't making more than a hundred, couple hundred a month. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just I have about I don't have a fan club right yet. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> what can you do to improve or develop your nature? Ah, I'm with you right now. This is part of it. And I told you I was kind of I, I decided the day that Oscar died, or that day, and then he died in his sleep that night. That day is when I put it on my calendar. I was going to start doing this book on Tuesdays. I was going to record the chapter like each week I'd do a section and edit it make it real professional and do upload a YouTube and then edit the um, audiobook and, and build a, a really professional audiobook and so on. that's what I decided the day that he passed away and so and so I say and now I'm kind of I don't know I think I should talk about those things on the professional videos so 
or the audiobook. So I'm getting it all out with you guys. Thank you for being here, listening to my stuff. 10 minutes. Ah, I was hoping to get out of here quicker. I'm sorry. Uh, what can you do to improve or develop? Like I said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm doing it. I'm being me. I'm going to develop my products, the things that I've finished. I'm going to take them to the next level instead of just letting them sit on my shelf where nobody's going to ever see them like this book. Now, remember, I wrote this book back in the 80s, redeveloped it in the early 90s, and then turned it into this version uh, 10 years ago, and still nobody's read it. So I'm taking it to the next level. Maybe now somebody's going to run into my book and go, hey, <laughs> my friend should have this book too. All right, let me see. Where are we? Oh, and by the way, that's what a friend is. A friend is anyone that improves your life. You can know all kinds of people, call them friends. But if they're not making your life better, supporting what you're doing, you feel like they're actually a support team or an improvement team or an investor team, whatever it is, that's your friends. Your friends are the people that improve your life. Maybe I shouldn't have said investor because maybe they don't care about improving their life. They're just trying to improve their bank account. They've got to want to improve your life. So that's got to be part of their motive, too. Okay. What's it? It can't be accidental. Okay. Which of your natures is most prominent or receives the highest priority? That changes. That changes. Sometimes the warrior gets up there and, uh, uh, you know, I'm the kung fu master. How do you think I learned all these weapons and taught all these classes for 40 years? You know, those, those, you know. But uh, most of them are musician. That's why as, as, even as a kung fu guy, I always had fun with my, my students, never beat anybody up, hurt people, didn't want anybody to get hurt. You know? and, uh, I'm like a hippie, hippie, hippie kung fu master. That's what I am, a hippie Buddha. Okay, let's see. Which of your natures should be most prominent for the next five years? <laughs> I'm gonna have got a nice blend going of them now. And they're all kind of in harmony. So for me, my Tao is a very, that's why I say, don't use me as your example to be you. You probably just have woman, worker, woman, worker. And that's it. And that's fine. And, and I'm going to show you how to master that and how to use because it's a support team. you got four people working together. So if you can figure out how to get this person to support this one, to support that, and this one supports that one, and this one supports that one, you get that type of thing that creates power. So that's what you want. You know, and everybody just doing their own thing. You want harmony together. So, okay. Which of your natures should be most prominent? Well, I guess the musician's up front, and, but I'm trying as hard as, sadly, I'm trying as hard as I can not to write any music or play anything. I got this one song that's been haunting me for like a week. I, I went and just recorded some of it a few days ago thinking, oh, hey, that's I'll get it out of my head, but it didn't because I really didn't get it. You know, I, I, I'm not going to listen to that thing. I'm going, oh, yeah, that's good. It's like, so and, and this is a song that's like bugging me to get out, and I'm just trying not to because I've got all this really... I mean, I'm seriously, I'm in a terrible bind. I'm on death ground trying to make enough money. Because in the next three months, I'm going to have all kinds of domains coming up, my web hosting coming up. My, um, I got my uh, uh, fees for my smog test and, uh, and my reg car registration and uh, something else. I mean, all these bills are happening like within a two-month window, and I just don't have that much money yet. How much I'm going to get each month? It's like, uh-oh. <laughs> so I'm thinking, how can I make some more money come in? So that's why I'm, I'm actually kind of like trying to like finish some of these projects. Because even this one, you know, maybe I'm not going to make any money right now, but if I can get that audio book done, and uh, it used to be I had to have five finished audio books. I started this before I went homeless back in 2011. I was trying to get my audio books to be an audio book producer for um, Audible. And so if I could get my audio books and get them out there, I, I think that they could sell. I think that people like my voice. <coughs> so I don't know why it's so kind of raspy today. <coughs> I actually have not sang in like one or two weeks. My voice is actually, gosh, look at this. This is what happens when I do not sing for over two weeks because I'm not driving around in my car or anything. I don't have any gas money and my car just got an engine light on. So I'm like... Anyway, wow, I, I got to sing. And I got it on my calendar. I'm supposed to be singing every day. I got, uh, every day I got a little window. I could should play flute. And every day I got a window. Man, not a window. I got, I'm trying to regiment myself a little, push myself into some good habits. Okay, um, so, but which of my natures for the next five years is going to be a blend. I'm, the, my, my goal is to harmonize. It's, it's my own harmony. And yours too now, actually. So, but as far as prominent... It, it's, well, we'll get on that another time. 14 minutes. Okay. <laughs>